before we get started with our message for today, let us lighten our hearts just a little bit. Okay. It says a keynote speaker was in such a hurry to get to the venue that when he arrived, he realized he forgot his dentures. Turning to the man sitting next to him, he said, he whispered to him, I forgot my teeth. So the man said, no problem. He reached in his briefcase and took out a pair. And he said, try these. And he said, oh, these are too loose. He said, no problem. He reached back into the briefcase and pulled another one out. And he said, try these. He said, these are too tight. He reached in the briefcase again and pulled another pair out. And he said, oh my goodness, these fit just perfect. So he went and after he did his lecture, he came back to the man and he said, I want to thank you so much for rescuing me. He said, where's your dental office? I'm looking for a dentist. He said, oh, I'm not a dentist. I'm the local funeral director. Bear witness. 
witness to the truth of our being. Even one hour a day leaves you 23 left. To give an hour every single day to the greater good is giving birth to a divine idea. Let us remember that everything is possible. What are you ready to give birth to? My Shariki and I really sends every single morning, I call them spiritual vitamins. And they send something that allows you to rise every day in the morning, speak a word for your day, and walk into your goodness. And she sent this one that I'm paraphrasing. It says, remembering the indwelling God, which brings me comfort. There is a divine solution to every human challenge. The solution is released through the dynamic action of the creator, which is the divine activity of God within each of us. God is not separate from me, but actually closer than my breath. A comforting, protective presence that moves through me to meet my every need. I am comforted to know the power of the divine is stirring in my mind and becoming active in the world in which I live and the world of my affairs. Today, in this now moment, I am reassured that God within me offers every aspect of the divine to me. Strength, wisdom, faith, love, power, and much more. When we expect more in each moment and are willing to surrender and give more to each moment, the presence, the power, which is love, will supply our every need. Giving birth to a divine idea is feeling complete unity with the creator, allowing no thoughts of separation to enter. So let us be free from having to woo, coerce, beg, and plead with God to affirming that I am, you are, and we are one with God. For then we are free to draw a new picture, to have a new vision, a new image of what a divine idea looks like, feels like, writes like, and be like. Mm -hmm. Giving birth to a divine idea frees me from the old, which bound me to the past. Giving birth to a divine idea is experiencing true freedom, which means I manage my emotions, not allowing my emotions to manage me. So my concerns, my relationships, my business, my ministry, my finances are in the safekeeping of the divine. In that, I surrender those emotions, those challenges, those concerns to a higher power that gets it done. Yes. To give birth to a divine idea that I have everything I need to be joy-filled in the here and in the now is to affirm what the psalmist says, 128.2. For you shall eat the labor of your hand. Happy shall you be, and it shall be well with you. For whatever we sow, we reap. What we give, we get. Our knowing should be showing as the power of God. Our awareness is preparedness. Our true understanding is always standing and demanding our greater expanding, giving birth to divine ideas. What are ideas and urging of inspiration from on high? We get to spin those urgings, that inspiration, any way that we choose. Our good has already been established. So claim it. When you claim it, it's to give birth to it. To give birth to it is to experience it. To experience it is to be able to testify about it. To testify about it is to assist in the awakening of the fellow man and fellow woman. To be an example to our youth. Everything is ours to utilize. How are we utilizing our spiritual coin? See, there's a power and a presence. There's healing that's flowing in us, all around us, as us. But how are we spending the coin? Are we looking at our neighbor pointing the finger when three are pointing back at you? Are you allowing that pain to overcome you? Or are you giving birth to 
for divine idea and claiming your wholeness. We wait on people, letters, phone calls, texts, emails, things to give us credibility. When the psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's simply affirming that we believe, we trust, we have faith that all of our needs are met. Ernest Holmes says in chapter 18, Law of Attraction, it says thought attracts to us that which we mentally embody, that which has become a part of our mental makeup. That part of my mental understanding that tells me wherever I am, whatever I do, think, and feel will follow, flow, and be a part of what comes next in my experience. So as I'm standing here, as you're sitting there, what are you thinking about? What are you giving power to? I would suggest that you give birth to a divine idea. I would suggest that when you leave out of here, you're expecting something great to unfold in your life. Yes. Only when you expect it, only when you give mental power to it, only when you allow your feeling tone to embrace it, can the soul bear witness to it. Ernest Holmes goes on to say that our mental capacity can only hold as much as we believe that it can hold. You can hold perfect healing right now. You can hold thoughts of all of your needs, resources, supply, unfolding. It's not how it's going to come. Trust God to get it to you. As I always tell you, your business is to hold the consciousness and form the thought. Stay out of God's business and allow God to do it any way that it pleases. So I affirm that I am giving birth to divine ideas. I affirm that a great upheaval is taking place. The spiritual underground, Addington says, is at work taking place in our lives right now. Stuff, people, habits, beliefs can fall away if you allow it. If we trust it, and if we do, that means we should hit the ground running to our greater good. We should say to our living, okay, Lord, you got this. I'm good. When you can believe, we allow ourselves to go back to Genesis, the beginning. Let us stop fighting life and all that it represents and let us flow with it. In divine consciousness with divine ideals, bringing harmony, unconditioned love, that peace that surpasses our understanding. Forgiveness that brings harmony, serenity, and balance. That calms the mind and the body. So when you allow good thoughts to flow through you, it calms the consciousness. It calms the body. And when the mind and the body is calm, the cells and the organs can regenerate itself, renew itself. You're giving it an avenue to express the presence healing power of God. Our lives right now are up to us. Calming your mind and calming your body. Ernest Holmes says, like attracts like. Through the power, we can bring in good and then send it out. Or attract its opposites and send that out as well. What are we giving birth to? I would say a divine idea is representing the presence and power of God. In Genesis 1 through 3, the beginning is really about embracing life's purpose, allowing and engaging the spiritual flow of the universe. First, starting with our faith in expressing our own creative power. When God said, let there be light, there was no other source of light yet. The earth, as it is written, was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. It had to be called forth. That's the first step in the process of calling your healing forth, calling unity in your relationships forth, calling that companion forth, calling forth resources and supply, calling forth traveling, all the things that you want to do. It has to have a starting point, and it starts with your 
consciousness and your belief about what life can and will give you. There must be a realization that life exists stemming from a divine idea, a thought in mind, relying on the internal power and energy of the divine to get it done. For in the realm of infinite possibilities, creations require a beginning point. This is where our faith comes into play, a confidence in our ability to call forth any and all things and act upon the infinite of spiritual substance. That's the tangible. God called forth everything because God knew that I can make things out of myself. We have the same power, the same energy, and the same vibration for we were made in the image and likeness of. So we can call for something, but there has to be no limitation in consciousness for it to come forth. Right. Right. It is written, let the waters under the sky be gathered together as one. Let the dry land appear the power of imagination at work out of the infinite possibilities. We get to choose, organize, and arrange according to our own personal creative choices, giving birth to divine ideas. Our understanding that all that is called forth already eternally exists. God has created everything. All we have to do is bring it out of the invisible, the unseen, to the seen. That's how everything has gotten here. That's how our world was created. And God showed us how to do it. Call forth what you will. Demonstrate the power that God has given each of us. The word light is the antidote to darkness. The word wholeness is the antidote to disease. Abundance, prosperity, is the antidote to lack and poverty consciousness. Charles Fillmore says, when God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, let the birds fly above the earth across the sky, let the earth bring forth grass, herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind. They all obey. Let your word obey you. What are you calling forth? What are you thinking about? What are you holding in consciousness? What are you holding in your heart center, which is your feeling tone, which is going to assist in how you feel about people, places, and situations? Spend the hour every day emptying out the old, allowing new wisdom to flow through you. Allow yourself an hour every day to get rid of the heaviness and the hurts that's been sitting, making room for God's love to overflow. God created humankind in his image and likeness with choice and dominion over the earthly creation. So in our own creative process, our ideas must be clear, focused, and fully formed in potentiality. Let us become pregnant, acknowledging our creative power to give expression of divine life, newness, giving birth to divine ideas. And it says on the seventh day, may we rest, allowing the creative energy of God to move through us without resistance, bringing forth that which we have created by right of consciousness, belief, trust, and our faith. To experience complete wholeness, you have to have an image and a vision of it. What does wholeness look like to you? What does joy look like to you? What does happiness look like to you? Get the image and vision in your mind so it can filter in your feeling tone and that your soul can bear witness to the truth of your being. To affirm that I know that I am some part of the divine being, that the power and the presence of the spirit is the word I speak and the word infinitely and perfectly and permanently makes whole. My body, my mind, my affairs. I know that I represent an individualization of the truth, the truth of wholeness, the truth of love, the truth of peace, reason, and sound mind, the truth of freedom, the circulation of the divine in every atom 
every function, every organ, everything that concerns me. Can I speak that word on my behalf and expect that word to do as God's words does bring to me that that I'm affirming? So I take hold of the realization with complete certainty. I recognize that I am a perfect being living under perfect conditions, knowing that good alone is real. I also know that good alone is the only thing that my creator wants for me and all of its offspring. So to call anything forth is to slap our father in the face. God created you to represent it, giving birth to divine ideas. Don't allow your emotions to control you. You control them. Don't allow people, things, and situations to fog your mind that you are less than a child of God. Don't allow people to pull you in their web of confusion. Choose today whom ye shall serve and serve that all the days of your life. The creative process is waiting, moving, and grooving. Waiting on you to give it an assignment. Give birth to a divine idea. The law of harmony in my experience. The law of prosperity. The law and sense of happiness and wholeness. I affirm today that I experience all the good. Today is the day that I give birth to a divine idea. Today is the day that you should get pregnant and give birth to a divine idea. Amen. Amen. Amen.